So to close I've known Carlos course. for a number of years, and hey, he okay. is an amazing friend of mine that has a powerful story of which he's overcome a lot of adversity. Um, he uh, is an amazing person that will reach to you and, and tell you volumes of his story. Um, I am proud to call him my brother, and I am so happy he's a part of my family. So without further ado, here's Carlos. City, what country? Oh, Vancouver, Washington. Oh, wow. Orchards. Good. Um, well, as you can see, um, my name is Carlos. I'm an original freedom writer. Um, I'm three years older than Sue, so some of you guys don't know. Um, we, I'm, I'm class of 95. Sue is class of 98. Um, we, my class is the one that started the freedom writers, and her class is the one that finished it. So a lot of people don't know that, but uh, when they filmed the movie, they put everything together and they just did one. Uh, uh, for you guys who don't know, I, my character in the movie, I'm the one that was uh, tagging the walls. So I used to be a tagger. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one that raised my hand and asked her about the Holocaust. You guys know what the Holocaust was? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Well, me at 16, 17 years old, I had no idea what that was. Uh, that's when I raised my hand and I asked the question, and very interesting. So, so how can I help you guys? You guys have a, uh, how are you guys doing? Or how are you guys doing in school? Or everything good? Yeah. 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 They're good. Decent. <laughs> We're good. So, so who got this chat together? Me and Kayla. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> what, was the, what was the reason you got this chat together? Because. Uh, you go first? I guess. Yeah. Because I think a lot of kids could like learn from this experience and like what you go through, like some similarities that us as kids go through as well. Um, honestly I've been through a lot of things that have been happening in the movie and that you guys went through and I wanted to hear what what made you like become the person that you are today. Okay. I wanted to hear that well, I wanted to um, I, I grew up with uh Basically, with no parents. Okay, uh, my mom left me when I was six months with my my with my dad, and then my dad left me with his mom, which is my grandma. Then my grandma passed away when I was ten years old. Then my dad left me with his uh, brothers and sister-in-laws and all that. My my I'm Mexican American, but my dad's from Mexico. Uh, he ended up going back to Mexico, and I don't know, you know, he ended up remarrying and stuff. But he left me here with his, with his family. Not knowing the way they were gonna treat me, I got I got mistreated. I got treated like crap. I, I trust me. I don't I don't wish that on anyone. I always say for you guys, if you guys have your parents, make sure you take care of your parents. Believe me, man. I have two girls, and I do the best I can. I will never do what they did to me. Listen to your parents. All they're gonna do is tell you positive stuff. All they want is something good for you. They're not being naggy or. I understand it's kind of hard when you're a teenager or you're in high school, but in reality, sometimes you're thinking, especially if some of uh, are you guys, do you guys have any single parents? Especially when you have single parents, make sure you know that they, that's hard on them. You know that they're probably trying to cook food at your table and they're trying to do everything they can. They can't be there 100% for you because they have to provide for you. And if you try to help your parents, that's the probably best thing that you can do. Believe me, man, there's nothing better like helping your parents. Someday you guys will grow up, and if someday your parents need anything, any money, whatever, don't wait for them to ask you for it. You say, here, mom, here, dad, or here, or appreciate that you have a mom. Some of us that didn't have a mom, I wish I had my mom. I wish I had my dad. My dad was there, but he wasn't in my life. Um, then, at that time, um, my ninth grade and my tenth, in my tenth grade, I was a, literally, I was a tenth F, F student. A straight F student in my tenth grade when I ended up my my sophomore year. When I started my new year, my uh, my junior year, in 1993, September 1993, that's when um, I walked into my English class, and that's when I met Miss G. Miss G was just 
24, 22 years old, who's just a student teacher coming straight from UC Irvine College University. Basically, she was just there to, to do her student teaching. Um, our regular teacher was, he will be sitting in the corner and Ms. G will be taking over the class doing her student teaching, right? Um, so that's, that's when that incident happened. That's when uh, being a straight up student, that's when the, um, when Melvin, my friend Melvin was sitting in the front, he drew a picture of my friend Sharad. So I don't know if you guys recall in the movie when they're passing a, a, a paper around the movie. Yeah. Okay, my friend Melvin is the one that drew that picture. Okay, and he did it to make fun of Sharad. Why? Because Sharad was always being the clown. He was always bagging on people. So Melvin said, you know what? I'm gonna get you. And he did. So he passed it around. I'm, I'm the one that's Mexican kid in the corner, you know, not in the back, but in the middle with a, with a backwards hat. That's, that's me. Uh, so when that incident happened and she picked up the paper and, uh, you know, she started lecturing us about racism and about, you know, it's not fun, you know, to make fun of people. It's not, uh, you know, whatever. She started lecturing us, period. At, at, at the age that she was, 23, 24 years old, she started doing it like a pro, man. I still think that that, that was a message from some from God or something because if the other teacher would have been there and if the other teacher would have picked up that paper, he would have just threw it away. I don't think he would have done what Ms. G did. From there, you know, I learned what the Holocaust was and we started studying about the Holocaust. And, and you know what? At that time, my life was already getting a little bit better because one of my uncles and my aunts that baptized me, they they left me stay at their house. They gave me an option, you know what, you can stay at the house as, as, as long as you do good. I said, that's fine. So I got that, I, I, I finally had a steady home. Um, I finally had a teacher that actually cared that I thought that I cared. Uh, because I, I, at my at my time, I was still kids today, man. I wish I had, I wish I had teachers like you guys have on now. I think teachers today are more into you guys. Before, I don't think it was like that. I think before it was more about, oh, let me just get paid and I'm out. But Ms. G didn't. I felt like she cared and she could. And so, um, so everything started going a little bit better for me when I met Ms. G. I, I, I ended up going buying a backpack. Being a tagger, my life was just tagger. I was just tagging and being around girls and partying and that's, that was my life. But when I met Ms. G, you know, I started getting more into school. So they were supposed to send me to this uh, continuation school by the name of uh, EPHS. It was like yesterday. But somehow I ended up getting my grades up and didn't, didn't send me. Uh, I started going to school more. Then my homies will see that I will go to school more. So then they started following me and going to school more. So we're a bunch of taggers going to school now. And a bunch of taggers that weren't supposed to graduate, we all did. We all graduated. I wasn't even supposed to graduate. From a from a straight F student, I ended up graduating with A's and B's. And I think uh, all of you guys can do it. I don't know how you guys doing in grades and stuff, but believe me, man, I, I got homies right now, 23, 25 years later, that are still renting, don't have money for a car. It's not going to affect you right now. It will affect you later in the future. That's why it's very important to go to school. It's very important to do what we have to do, especially the way this country is going. It's, it's very important to have a, an education, guys. Very important. Me, I went I, when I graduated from high school, I ended up going to college to become a cop. After I was a tagger vandalizing the walls and all that, I wanted to become a, a, a cop because a lot of my homies became cops. Even now, they're cops and detectives. Um, Unfortunately, I couldn't finish my, my, my college because I was living by myself. I had no one helping me. I had two jobs and going to school at the same time. I couldn't. I, I, I couldn't keep up. So what I did, I had to get a, I had to keep the jobs for me to keep, continue paying my rent. I had no choice. Uh, but long story short, I struggled through all that. And now um, I work really hard. I, I'm, I became a plumber. Now, I, I own a plumbing business. I have people that work for me now. Uh, and every, everything pays off in life, you know? I mean, it wasn't easy. But that's where, I'm, that's where I'm at right now. I was a soccer coach, and I have four licenses to coach soccer. I can coach a college if I, if I want. 
because um, I'm certified for all that. But, uh, but right now I'm busy running my plumbing business. And if I can do it, I think you guys can do it. But back to my homies that I have right now, some of them never graduated high school. One of them just went back to school to, he didn't even finish the ninth grade. Put it that one. He just went back to school to try to get his GED. Some of them are dead, because I got a lot of friends that got killed when we were younger. Got shot up for tagging or for whatever reason it was. Um, and I survived, you know, and, I, and, and I'm here with you guys right now talking to you guys. So you guys have any questions? Yes. Yes. What would you guys like to know? Uh, does someone want to start, or do you want to start? Um, yes, please. Okay. Um, so, you you were a tagger, right? I used to be a writer, yeah. Um, or... No, a I was, once tagger. a writer, I was, knew I was going to be a writer. I just, I just tagged on this GY here real quick. <laughs> um, why, why did you tag? Like, was it, was it, uh... What, did why, they, why did I tag? Yeah, to show, like, territory, or, like... For no, fun, but, or... okay. See, there's gangs and there's tagging crews. We were uh -huh. we were a tagging crew. I wasn't really a gang. At the end, I can get. I, I'll talk to you guys about that later. But at okay. the end, as I got like close to 98, 99, it got more like to a tagging to a tag banging. Okay. But at the beginning, it was more like a tagging. Why did I get into into writing? To uh, I was miserable, man. That was my happiness. That was my freedom. That was my when I went up to a wall, I felt good because I didn't want to go home, bro. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a steady home. I was miserable. I got treated like crap. I would get blamed for everything. There's times that I would stay in the alley because I would hear my ass talking behind my back, so I would just grab my stuff and leave. I didn't. I didn't ask to put myself in that position. I mean, now I know my mom and my dad, and I. And I, and I met my mom after when I was 21 years old. You know, I was still my mom and my dad. I mean, I'm, I was the only child that they had. Mm -hmm. They, they, they both have their lives already. They, they both have kids separately. I'm the only one. And I used to always talk to him about it and be like, why didn't you guys have me if you guys weren't ready to have a kid? I mean, the one that struggled was me. It wasn't them. You know? So the reason I got into writing, there's no excuse why, why I got into writing, but that that made me, that fulfilled me, man. That 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 was like my happiness for me. As soon as I would go to, I would get up in the morning, go to school, that was my fun time. I would stay out as much as I can before I went back home because I hated it. I was miserable. But when you're at school, you look like a normal kid. I never talked to anyone about my issues or my problems. You never know. I'm for sure, so you guys look like good students right now. I'm for sure each of you guys have some issues that you guys have in at home that you guys don't talk about. And your teacher is, you know, it, it, it all depends if you chose your teacher, you want to talk about it to your teacher. With Ms. G was different. You know, she made us write in journals. Uh, it took me a while for me to write in the journal because I was kind of shy and kind of embarrassed of, of writing the stuff, but that's the reason I got into tagging. Also, all my family been part of gangs, all of them, except two of my cousins. Just me and two of my cousins only became writers. We're the only ones that didn't want to join the gang. So that's why I got into tagging. That was my, it made me feel good when I would write because it was like stress relief for me, man. That's amazing, thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, what advice would you give someone that's going through a lot right now, but don't really want to like, um, that's struggling in school because of what's happening in their lives? Like, what advice would you give them? Are, are you trying to say like, uh, someone str like struggling at school due to something happening at home? Yes. That's, that's, that, that's me right there. I, I mean, keep, you gotta be strong minded. You gotta be very strong. You gotta... I know I did it, and but I did it a different route. I did it tagging wise. I don't want you guys doing that because that's not right. I, I wish I would have never gotten into tagging. I would never tell anyone that that's okay to do that because it's not. Um, you can, you know what? If you if you stressed out about something, do what we did. I mean, and, and it works, man. Sit down, you get a journal, and write down everything that you feel. Write it down, so you can. You don't want to talk it to someone. You don't want to let someone know. Then write everything down that you feel in the journal. Write it down and believe me, it, it works. It's like it releases your stress a little bit. It works. Now, I know it's kind of hard having problems at home, maybe not having the support from someone, and then going to school and all that. You you got to be strong enough and prove those people wrong. You got to say, you know what, I got to do this. I'm going to do this for me. I'm going to do this for my mom. I'm going to do this for myself so I can get my respect. I, 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 
I don't know what type of issues that you guys are having. I, I don't know. But you got to be strong and concentrated in school and do what you have to do. It's, it's all about you. You got to make sure you graduate. You got to make sure you get your education. You want Because believe me, it, it will affect you not right now. It's going to affect you 10, 20 years later. See where you're going to be at 20 years from now. I mean, we, I just, we are just talking about uh, last week about, man, I remember when I was 18 and it's 20, 20, Four years later, I mean, time flies, guys. It goes by fast. Um, what's some things that people said to you that did not want you to do better? Me? Yeah. Oh, well, my. I mean, like for example, my aunt and my uncles. They used to call me that that I was an abandoned child, that I wasn't going to be nothing because I was a tagger. Actually, in reality, I was a good kid. I mean, I had to be a good kid at people's houses because it wasn't my homes. I had to wake up. Before I went to school, I had to do my bed. I had to wash dishes. I had chores to do, even though I didn't want to. I had to do them. Um, they used to put me down all the time that I wasn't gonna be nothing. They didn't like me because I suppose they didn't like me because supposedly I looked like my mom. That I don't know. It, it, they thought that I was never gonna get my life together. I wasn't. I wasn't a bad kid. I, I really wasn't a bad kid. I was a really respectful kid. I never gave my teachers any problems actually. I never gave my teachers any problem. I never tagged the school either. I, I didn't. I didn't. Um, I always say, you know, your teacher's gonna be your teacher. Your teacher's not gonna be your babysitter. You need to understand how hard it is to be a teacher these days. And I respect what they do. I, I, it's my my respect to those teachers that take their time to go and teach and and, and do what they love to do to teach someone else. You know, your teacher's gonna be your teacher. Your teacher's not your. Your, uh, your babysitter, your teacher there to help you out for sure. If you those guys go talk to your teacher, your teacher's gonna help you and give you right rights. Uh, well, so, and there, every person, everyone that will tell me, put me down all the time, believe me, you will never forget those people. I, I talk to all those people that will put me down. Why? Because now they ask me for jobs for their kids and I'll tell them no. <laughs> Not because I'm being mean, because I don't like to hire family. I don't hire family. And the people that would put me down, it was actually my own family. And it's sad to it's sad, it's sad to say that, but sometimes it's the people that mostly are putting you down. It's actually your family most of the time. So. In what ways are Miss G still pushing you to better? Not like physically, but like mentally. Why is still with you? Oh, Miss G. For starters, me and Ms. G have a different relationship than every any other freedom writer. She's she's literally my mom, actually. You know, I've been knowing her longer than anyone else. And I have a relationship with Ms. G, like like she comes to my parties, I, I go out with her, have dinner once in a while. I, I I live five minutes away from the Freedom Writer Foundation. I come by and stop by and say hi to them all the time. Um, she's my mentor, man. I don't know if you have ever met her, but if you ever meet her, she'll talk to you like she knows you for years. She'll hug you and kiss you and eh, you know and she'll do all that stuff. <laughs> Just like the movie, she had, she had Hillary Swank did a great job playing her man. Actually, you know what? When I saw, I seen the movie. I I have watched the movie one time only. I only seen the movie once. Oh. I don't like watching the movie. Not because I don't like it, because it brings me back memories that I think those those, those were the best memories of my life when I had in high school. I wish I would still be in high school. You know, living those memories. Um, I got really sentimental when I saw Hillary Swank write her name on the chalkboard. She wrote it exactly just the way she used to write. And I remember, I remember telling Miss G when we were back in back in the nineties. I used to tell her, you know, Miss G, you're gonna be somebody because she's smart, man. Intelligent, smart. Uh, she makes it so easy when she helps you. Like she makes it so easy. You know, that's why. I was never the type of person to raise my hand because I will never raise my hand. But she got me to do that. You know, she I, I, she got my trust. I got her trust. You know, and I trust her with everything. You know, she guided me. And I graduated 100% because of her. Because I, want, I had her for four classes, four classes in a row. I didn't want to miss her classes. I would run, jump through windows. They don't show that in the movie. But I will go through windows, through the window on room 203 to be able to be in there. Now, when we first started, we didn't start in room 203. We started in the room 100, the 100 building upstairs. That's when all that incident happened with the paper and all that. Then the second, 
then she was supposed to be gone at the beginning of the semester. At the end of the semester, she was supposed to be gone. So second semester, she wasn't supposed to be there. So that I went to 93 to second semester of 1994. So that's another thing they don't show in the movie. They don't show that it was room uh, in the 100 building. They also don't show when me and other freedom writers, we went to go talk to the principal and let him know that we wanted her to continue being our teacher. He didn't know what was going on. Um, long story short, uh, he ended up staying the second semester, and that's when they moved us to room 203, 1994 room 203. That's when, when the movie starts, it says uh, June or summer of June, uh, of, of, of June of 1994, because that's when they gave us the room. But in reality, we started in the 100 building. Damn, they, they don't show any of that stuff. Uh, that's, that's when she started having problems with the other teachers. We didn't know why. You know, we just wanted to be around her. We love we loved the way she she, she she taught us. We loved the way she was handling the class. We, you know, we just we just wanted to be there. I mean, I don't, I, especially me, I didn't want to go home. I didn't want to go home at all. She used to take, she used to worry about me catching, because I used to catch three buses to go to school. And she used to wear at night. Like, there was a lot of problems with tagging and stuff like that. She used to take me all the way home at night. You know, and as you can see, in the movie, she gets, she gets, her husband leaves her and she gets divorced, right? In the movie. Well, there's, there's, there's a lot to that, but uh, now, now, now that we're older, now we know why. I mean, that when we were younger, we, you know, we just wanted to be, be around her and she would spend a lot of time with us. Instead of spending the time with her husband, she would spend it with us. Now that we're older, we understand that now. You know, I wish she would have never got divorced, you know, but she did get married really young and when she was in college and, but that's that, but um, yeah, um, I wish they would have put that on the movie. They, 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 there was a lot of stuff that they didn't add into the movie that. Do you guys have any other questions? I do, ask? actually. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a musician. And You're a musician? Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, and I just want your take on like I'm afraid to show more of myself in my own Why? art in my own sort of. Are you embarrassed? I don't know. I just it's like what. If you're, if, if you're a musician, you know you have to sing in front of people, right? Well, yeah. It's like I'm 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 afraid of showing myself through my own writing. No, you, you have to you have to let yourself go, dude. What what's stopping you? I don't. Exactly. Are you afraid of something? I'm afraid of. My own feelings. Negativity? Someone's gonna criticize you or something? I don't exactly. Yeah, what it is, huh? I don't know. It's uh, something. You do what you have to do, bro. You know what? You don't, don't, don't. Okay, here's it. Yeah. Don't worry about what other people think. You believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, man. Believe it. Trust me. I got. They used to tell me all this crap that I was never gonna be anyone. Look now. My goal is to become a millionaire, and I'm getting there. And I got any car I want. I can buy any car I want. I can buy any house I want now. Be by myself. You can do it. Don't let nobody put you down and don't be afraid of what people are going to think. That's the only way you're going to come out and be and let it out, man. You have to sing. As a matter of fact, sing a song right now. Sing a song right now. If you sing a song right now, that means that you're down. All right. You're really about to do it. I really, I really am. Grab it. I'm doing the guitar. Grab it. Can somebody hand me my guitar? I got you. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 you really want to just force the image. You got it. I need you to do that in front of the whole Dude, your zipper's fucked. There's many things. Bust. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 you didn't clip your strings? <laughs> no, I didn't clip my strings. <laughs> Oh, wait, go into my front, my front. Oh, yeah. I think I have my capo in there. You have your capo in there? No, not my front, that pocket, but that, like the, the, the second front pocket, okay. Ready? No, 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 the other front. The other front, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> what should I say? To the balcony? Sure. He's pretty good. Oh, I play. <laughs> I, you know, I actually, I play, I play anything. You could get more of this. You should look. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. I'm trying to. He's going to play a power ballad and he's going to do it with acoustic guitar. <laughs>
You gotta, you gotta believe in yourself, man. You, you know what? I, li- I like what you're doing right now. I thought you were gonna rank out. Rank out means I'm gonna back out. I wasn't gonna do anything. Okay. And here's Wonderwall. <laughs> Wonderwall, they say. Okay. No. That's the joke I always If you say. do, I will leave. <laughs> uh, Wonderwall's a good song, though. <laughs> you don't have to live this way You don't have a debt to pay So put your foot down and pick your heart up Off the ground Cause that's not where you belong I can prove that without this song But for now, just play along I know you've been hurt by the way that he talks to you Hurt by the way that he fights with you And I know hurt by the way that he loves you I guess. I like them. Have, have you played? Have you played to your family? I have. What do they think? They think I have a bright future. They, they think you have a good future? Yeah. I think so too. I'm not. I'm. I'm not an expert on that, but you sound pretty good, bro. Thank you. And that's a talent. Not anyone can play a guitar like that. I can't. I. <laughs> I, I <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even if I wanted to try, I mean, but you. You look like you're a natural. You were born for that, bro. Keep your dream up. But go to school. Yeah. Finish your school first. You know, you got you all of these kids, you just have to have at least three options. Option one, you wanna become this. Option two, you wanna do this, and option three, if option one and option two doesn't work out, then option three will be option. Make sure you guys have options for your future. So you sound good, right? Good job, man. Thank you. I was wondering like how hard it was to recover like all of your like all the school that you failed before you met like Mrs. G because obviously you couldn't just like graduate without those credits right yeah um yeah, well, yeah like I said I was a scared of student you know what 
that class, that I, I feel like it wasn't even a class. It, 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 it was so fun in there that know, it's kind of hard to explain that. Like right now, we do these things called institutes in the summer. Institutes are we bring thirty teachers from all over the world, and we we only get to teach three, thirty teachers and one for a whole week. We, we have thirty teachers for a whole week, and we teach them the Freedom Rider method. What does that mean? Uh, so a bunch of teachers they learn everything as G taught us and the way she did it. So whenever they go back and teach their kids. They're having fun playing games with, the, with their students and learning something at the same time. So they make it fun. Uh, Ms. G made it fun. Uh, like I said, I have, for for my 11th year, for my 11th year, I had her two classes. In my senior year, I had her for four classes. I had her for first, second, third, and fourth. Um, my whole day was there. That was fun for me. My other three classes I had, uh, it was PE, you know, uh, history, and whatever it was. Um, I changed my ways, man. I changed my ways of thinking. I, I don't know what it was. I, 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 instead of thinking of not getting up, going to school, or, or not going to school, go, go do whatever we gotta do, my, my, my whole thing was getting up and go straight to class. Just for what everything Ms. G was teaching us. And then it, don't, it don't have to be Ms. G, it can be anyone. You know, like I said, your teachers are there to teach you, to help you. They're pretty no time to go out there. You know, you hablas español? No, I was a little bit. Oh, my family oh. is Mexican, so I mean, you can yeah. try. Yeah. yeah. Also, the thing that was motivating me to get better grades is, like I said, my mom, a couple of my family members were telling me, and my aunts and my uncles that I wasn't gonna be nothing in life. So, and that was, that's what, like, okay, we'll see. Well, I'm not gonna do it for you. I'm doing it for myself. So I do everything for yourself. Don't, don't worry about what anybody says. All right, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, guys? What? Hey, guys. Oh, you go. This is fine. All right. Um, yeah, I just want to know, like, is there anything like specific during your high school years that you like regret doing or like? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was a soccer player. I, when I was when I was staying in Mexico with my grandma, I used to be on the reserve, so it's a Mexican professional team out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I I broke my ankle. Oh. When I came back, I did surgery on my ankle and everything. I was fine. But when I got back from Mexico playing soccer here, um, I was really advanced. I was good. I wish. I wish I would change a lot of things in high school, my man. Yeah. I wish I would have never been into tagging. I wish I could have graduated with a master's. I, I wish I would have done all that. I wish I would have played by sports that I could have had a chance to play sports in high school. The coach, the soccer coach, would literally beg me every day to play for the team, and I wouldn't. At the beginning, I couldn't because I had straight heads. Mm -hmm. But after I got my grades together, you know, I, I just chose not to play because I was too busy. Um, even though I was still going to class and I was getting my grades together, I was still tagging, you know? Yeah. I was, I was still tagging, I was still going to that. I thought it was too cool, or I thought it was too embarrassing to go play for go play soccer in front of the homies or whatever. Like, try to show all try to show that I'm a soccer player when I was a tagger. You know, I, I regret all that, bro. Take advantage of everything you can right now, man. Everything you can, dude. That's like I, I think one thing that I do regret that I, I do regret becoming a tiger. I wish I would have never become a tiger, but it's just uh, just the way I was raised, man. I was raised in the, I was raised, I was raised into tagging. I was raised with my cousins. Uh, I was raised in the hood. Still, you know, my family still live in the hood. It was a. Uh, oh, I did a video. I, I did a, a podcast not so long ago, and I always tell people if, if you hang around with the wrong crowd, you're gonna end up in the wrong side. Yeah. You know, I hang around with taggers and gangsters, I became one. You know, you hang around with the students that are are thinking of graduating and, and put in and, and going to college, you're gonna become one of those. You gotta be like for kids when they get into gangs and all that, you gotta be very, very careful about what you do. You, you never let anyone tell you what to do or never try to show off in front of girls. I mean, the thing that I will see a lot of that 
where people do drugs. That's another thing I never did. I was around drugs every day, and I never chose to. I never did anything. It, it didn't cross my mind. I I didn't like it. I didn't want to. I used to call. I used to be. They used to call me names because I didn't, wouldn't do, you know, drugs in front of them. And, and I said, well, go ahead, call me whatever you want. I know I'm not. You know, in reality, I wouldn't. But there's a lot of. Uh, don't be intimidated of doing drugs in front of people and just just to show off in front of girls or girls show off in front of guys. So yeah. if you don't want to do drugs, don't do them. And don't. And I don't recommend you to do that because it's not going to get you anywhere. I got two uncles right now. They're close to their 60s, and all they do is walk around Long Beach all night. Why? Because, like I said, it won't affect you now, but it will affect you later in the, in the future. Mm-hmm. And they don't get any more, you know? I pass by, I see them, I have to give them money all the time. They're my dad's brothers. They're still uncles no matter what, but you know what? You don't want to right? You know, you want to be yourself and be strong-minded. Always be a leader, don't never be a follower. Never do what any other people tell you what to do. Do what you think is the best way to do. Go, go man. Um, what career accomplishments make you the most proud of yourself? What career? Like career, like accomplishments. What what accomplishments have I accomplished? Okay. What accomplishments makes you the most proud of yourself? Being a dad. I have I have two daughters. One of them's nineteen, the other one's seventeen, and I'm there for them and I try to help them as much as I can. And they're my daughters, they're my babies, man. I will never do what they did to me, never. But you know what? Sometimes kids don't understand. I mean, sometimes I don't know what. Sometimes we try to give them everything that we didn't have, and sometimes they don't understand the life we lived. You know. Uh, that's probably my best accomplishment that become more great. Uh, then I became a father, that's probably the best thing that I only don't regret having them. Yeah. Besides my business, but my being a father was my first accomplishment that I Um, For the line game, what did you see in other people and how did you feel when you did the line well, game? So the line game is I'm, I'm one of the I'm one of the students that by the time my first the first time that they killed one of my friends I was 12, 13 years old man I was in the car when they shot him in the chest and in the head and I was in the back seat by the time we did the line game I already had like ten friends that were dead already and I was only sixteen I had a, I had a total close to 20, 20 of my friends that got killed. Literally, like in parties, it's not like today. I don't know how it is today, but in the 90s here in Long Beach, it was really bad. It was really bad because the, uh, all the gangs, they didn't like tackles. Uh, Mexican gangs didn't like black gangs. Black gangs didn't like Mexican gangs. Asian gangs didn't like the Mexican gangs. So sometimes we would dress like tackles. I mean, being taggers, but sometimes we would dress like gangsters, so they wouldn't see the difference if when you see a Mexican just like a gangster they you they figured out that you were just a gangster that was dead. You know? But the line game, that was something really, really positive that Ms. G brought out. Because after the line game that's when we started getting a little bit closer. I mean we we didn't we weren't really close in the class until after later on we started noticing that you have issues, I have issues and we started, you know, noticing that we all had we, we 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 can all relate to some things that we don't have in, the, in, in in our house, but I was one of the students that had at least ten, ten you know friends that got killed by the, by the time I would go up to the line. Most of the time, I would end up by myself at the line. The she wise, you know, stand the line if you had more than five friends that were killed, whatever. I would stand up in the line by myself. And I'm serious. I mean, I got shot up. I got stabbed. I mean. I'm blessed to be here talking to you guys. Believe me, there's times that, I mean, I wake up and sweat sometimes thinking about a certain night when I got shot up in the car like five feet away and the, the guy that didn't hit me, I, I, it still doesn't make any sense to me how, how he missed me. I really don't, I mean, I guess it wasn't my time. And then to find out the next day that my wife was pregnant with my first daughter 
imagine if I would have that killed if I would have died, I would have never got to my daughter. So all that comes in mind. I mean, your friends and your your homies, you you notice you you get to know this all all this after you get older. You know, you notice that your homies, if you're part of a crew or part of a gang, there's gonna be certain of your friends that are gonna be close to you. The rest of them are just gonna be your friends. Uh, most of them, they're not gonna visit you. If you ever go to jail, if you ever go or your family needs help, or your, yeah, they're not gonna help. You know, you're gonna help yourself, and you're gonna try to figure out a way to help yourself. So, they're your homies and your friends while they're there. But in reality, there is no such thing as friends. Man. That's why you do what you gotta do on your own. Don't get involved in all crap like gangs or taggings and stuff like that. Don't, don't do that. I mean, it's not gonna get you anywhere man. besides jail or killed or, you know, get away from drugs too. That does not get you anywhere because, I mean, it's sad. I mean, I see some of my friends standing in front of 7-Eleven asking for money, and that guy graduated with me. I mean, how can it be possible? I mean, well, that's a life. It's a life changer, man. I mean, you never know where you're gonna end up, man. So you guys gotta be careful. Make sure you get your education. It's very important that you get your education, man. I, mean, I push that on that. I push that on everyone. And help your parents. For those of you that have single parents, maybe sometimes your parents get on your nerves. And I know some, you know, I'm sure they do. But they're your parents. You know, need to understand. Especially, it's hard when they're single. Help your parents. Don't give them any hard times. I mean, you need to understand they're probably trying to do the best they can. You know. Were there any kids who never warmed up to Miss G? Were there any what? Were there any kids who never warmed up to Miss G? Who never warmed up to Miss G? Yeah. Like you mean like like opened learned, up to Miss G? Yeah, like they never learned to trust her or whatever. Like, like you were what? I'm sorry. Like they just stayed the same. Uh, you can say a lot of us change, man. You can say maybe the whole class changed because after that, the whole class became different. We were all close like a family, and before we weren't. I mean, I would look at I would look at Melvin and Shara like like I wanted to just fight these dudes. <laughs> and after right now, they're like my brothers, man. Seriously, it changed everybody. It changed it changed our ways of. And realizing racism it changed the ways of realizing like uh, i have a video you know like i say i mean um, you, you get cut we all be the same color right we, we're we're i mean we got to know that we're all the same but all because i, I was around nothing but mexicans and, and, and all nothing but mexicans you know especially in long beach like i said it, it was bad with, with the with the Asian gangs and the black gangs, and you will hardly see any Mexican hang around with any blacks because of that. But I, I did it. I changed my ways of thinking like that, and I said, Nah, you know what? They're my friends, and we're all the same. And and I'm for sure most of the, most of the class got changed, man. It did. And then you also got to put in there for yourself to change things, not just leave everything to your teacher. You gotta put an effort for yourself also, you know? The teacher's there to guide you, and then you are the one that needs to guide yourself, so. Okay. Was there, there any time that you ever lost hope um, during your high school career? Where you just felt I like giving up? I lost any help? Hope. hope. Like, hope? you just felt like giving up? Oh, man, in the 10th grade, I was done. That's why I was a straight up student. I, I was done. I just said, you know what? I don't know where I'm gonna end up. I, I don't. I you know there was times that I would just say, you know what? It's probably better for me to get shot and get died, and that's it. I don't have to worry about myself, man. Seriously. You know what's funny? I went through all that, and my mom lived in Long Beach, and I never got to meet her until I was 21. She never looked for me, and then, you know, when I graduated from high school, nobody went to my graduation. I haven't even, I didn't even had, when I went to the prom, my principal bought me two tickets for me and my date because I didn't have any money, man. You know? That he knew, a lot of people knew my situation, so maybe he, they, they would feel bad for me or whatever, you know? 
but I appreciate all that because you know, it was something positive. No, nobody was ever gave me anything. So. But yeah, there, there was times that I just be like, "Why am I here?" You know, I, I had no money. You know, there was times I had money to eat. Uh, when my dad came back, I. That's why even until now, everything I have is that I earned it on my own. I'm not used to asking anyone for money. I think I, back in 1990 around there, I asked my, I remember asking my dad for five dollars, and he told me to go after my mother and this and that. And that one, and, and that is always gonna stay in my my head. I will never forget that. I will never forget that. But, you know, I can't be I can't be stuck with all these uh, bad memories. You know, I moved on. I'm I'm, I'm happy. I made I made peace with my mom. I I'm nobody to forgive or not to forgive. I mean I'm nobody. You know what? I just decided to, you know what? It took me ten years for me to call her mom. Now I now I call her mom, uh, and we have a good relationship now. Now it's the opposite. Now my dad doesn't talk to me because I talk to my mom. So I'm kind of screwed either way, man. Because I I have I have no fault in this. You know it wasn't I didn't ask to be born. I they just brought me here, and yeah, I, I mean, it, it, I'm giving you guys advice to get along with you guys' parents, with your dad, with your mom, you know, respect them. Me, I try to do everything. I try. Uh, my dad doesn't want to speak to me because I made peace with my mom. Basically, he's upset because she left me and, and I forgive her. But he needs to understand that, that that happened 42 years ago. You know, we all make mistakes and he wasn't in my life either. So... So, everyone has to go to their next class, but I want to say thank you for speaking with us. For this opportunity to give us, to talk to you. No, thank you. Thank you for reaching out to us. And, uh, uh, this is a great experience, you know, to talk to you guys. I mean, when I see you guys sitting there, I wish I could go back in class and be there, man. You know, I, I, I miss it, you know. Make, make every moment enjoyable enjoy your high school years man because they go by fast go on. you put the guitar bro keep it up man i want to see you on youtube pretty soon <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so much